they made the question even more personal they want to see if you are inspired by what you read or see or hear around you it is mandatory for you to submit a certificate if you have participated in any activity price surprise now there are only two essays but interestingly this year it can be a social issue or a conversation that you are generally passionate about if you don't read a lot of books ashoka not a space where you can survive easily Hi, welcome to Evolving Being. Uh my name is Garima. Uh I'm the founder of Evolving Being and we have a uh, Kizom with us. Hi, hello. My name is Enzo Kizom. I work as the application manager at Evolving Being. I graduated from Ashoka University with an advanced major in psychology and a minor in media studies. Great. I'm also an alumni of Ashoka. I did the Young India Fellowship program from the second batch. and i've served on the admissions panel both for the undergraduate and the postgraduate program currently i'm also a student i'm at harvard uh, on a fulbright scholarship pursuing uh, my graduate program in education leadership and entrepreneurship and today we are here to talk to you about uh, the freshly brewed new application process that has been released for the undergraduate program We've observed a few changes, and we just want to wanted to discuss that and share our insights on the new process. So that's what the video is for. To start with, uh, the three stages of the admissions process remain the same. We have the application form, which has to be submitted online, and there continues to be a mandatory Ashoka aptitude test uh, along with the on-the-spot essay. And the third stage is the interview process. so these three stages remain sacrosanct we see a few changes in the application process so we are going to uh, zoom in further on that uh kizo any updates on the batch size how it has been last year versus this year so there hasn't been any updates so far about the batch size but uh the last update they had was so dg24 who are the first years at the moment and they've selected 690 So about seven hundred is the size of the batch so far. Great. Uh, On to the standardized tests. I see that last year they were accepting the SATs and the ACT scores as well, but this year they've made an amendment and now they also accept the CUED score, which is the Common University Entrance Test. After that was introduced by the central government, so that's one more score that you can report to the university. but this uh, doesn't mean that you can escape the ashoka after due test that continues to uh, remain mandatory for all students is of the one to talk about the non academic activities and engagements so for non academic activities and engagement the kept everything same except that it was mentioned that this year it is mandatory for you to submit a certificate if you have participated in any activity um at the level of inter school engagement or uh, if you've like participated in a position of leadership they are asking for a certificate yeah this was actually a, a very commonly asked question in the last cycle as well where i remember the students saying that i've done so and so activity worked at an ngo or done some community service but i don't have a certificate uh but here they've written it uh explicitly that it is mandatory for you to submit a certificate to show your engagements so this is something that you can keep in mind as you identify uh the nature of engagements but something else that has happened is that they've reduced the number of activities you can talk about from 5 to 3 and uh, this can work either way depending on your profile because there are some students who have too many things to write about and it becomes difficult to choose the top 5 but at the same time it reduces your pressure of writing a uh, a description for each of those activities because you need to add that 50 word description for each so you need to write two lesser of those so you know that also works to your advantage anything else on the non academic activities uh so like i just they've reduced the number but i also wanted to add one point uh which is when even during my time when i was applying and i think a lot of students make the mistake of not focusing a lot of the description aspect of the non academic engagement 
I just wanted to reiterate here saying that students should focus also on the description aspect where they have 50 word limits where you can explain your engagement with uh, any of those activities and I just wanted to point that out to all the students who are applying this year to focus on that part as well. Yeah, that's right actually because sometimes the descriptions that we see tend to go very long and it becomes a challenge to uh, write it in a crisp manner. So very often the technique that we use is instead of writing full sentences, we just put a comma, comma, comma and in brief uh, using more verbs to describe that engagement and also quantifying that engagement. Uh, and this often needs uh, several rounds of editing before we see like a final version ready. Uh, so that's a really good tip, Izon. Thank you for sharing that. Moving on to the book section, anything unique that you see there? So, although they've kept the number of the list, number of books that you can write about, especially, especially the names in the genre, it's still five books. The one addition they made was that they asked the student to recommend one book out of the list to, they were to recommend it to others. And that's the new one where they can write the name of the book they want to recommend and a little bit information about it. It's a 50 words. The word limit is 50 for that. Yes, that's the new change essentially that you need to also pick one book from your list and tell us why you would like to recommend this book to others. So they want to uh, lay emphasis on the fact that reading is uh, of importance at Ashoka and we value uh, students who read and write critically and uh, uh, that's coming through in this. So not a surprise because in the interview process you hear a lot of questions around books that students have mentioned. So they've taken that out of the interview and put it into the application form itself. Um, right. Moving on to the essays, uh, we see several changes in the essay. So just to give you an overview, uh, last year we had three essays that they had asked and this year, uh, surprise, surprise, now there are only two essays uh, in the application form. So your workload reduces, which is a plus, but uh, the nature of essay uh, continues to remain reflective and something that cannot be blindly copy pasted from the net or from your friend. Uh, it has to uh, be customized and it has to focus on your journey and what other things that you value. So Kizo, would you like to share say, essay one, what it was last year and what it has become this year? Uh, so for the essay one, uh, last year, uh, the question essay one was, what is an idea, concept or theory that you find interesting and why? Um, and in what ways have you examined and engaged with this topic? So it's a 400 words essay that you need to write. Uh, this year, they've changed the topic. Um, one may look at it in quite a similar way because they are again uh, asking you to talk about a topic or an issue. And if I may read the question for this year, it says, at a residential campus, if a conversation with a fellow students extends late into the night, and is about a particular topic or issue that you're deeply passionate about, what would the topic be and what would your perspectives and views be on it? So again, it's a 400 words essay this year. In my opinion, the changes they have made is not necessarily that huge. Uh, they're still asking about a topic or issue that one is interested in. Um, but interestingly, this year, um, unlike last year's essay, which was kind of focusing on concept or theory, but this year it need not be a theory that it can be a social issue or a conversation that you are generally passionate about. Um, so that was a shift in there. The word limit is still the same. Um, and I think it's a very interesting question to respond to for a college application. Yeah, you're right. You know, actually, I feel question one was more focused on in-classroom learning, which is a theory or a concept, whereas this question is focused more on outside the classroom learning. And you wouldn't want to talk about something that you're not passionate about deep into the night with a friend when uh, it's, it, it's time to unwind. Uh, I feel that they want to, they've made the question even more personal. At the same time, if there are students who have already, who had last year's question in mind and were preparing and working towards it, 
there is a an easy way to transition from last year's uh, key ideas that you may be working on to this year uh, simply by uh, sort of translating that idea into a more a personal or a passionate appeal uh, instead of for instance if you're passionate about economics and you picked up a theory from economics to speak about in in last year's essay this year what you can do is you can still be passionate about the same topics but you can speak more from the uh, standpoint of why that matters to you or what is it that caused that a shift in your life to reflect on those ideas so uh, the key word here is particular topic or issue and deeply why you are deeply passionate about it rather than focusing on a theory within that field of economics uh, that Uh, that you could be focusing on. So uh, that's the change. Moving on to uh, essay two. Uh, essay two says uh, last year's essay was interesting. They asked you to share with us an important personal experience which has significantly shaped you and your perspectives on life. Please uh, uh, provide relevant details to help us understand you better. For one fifty words. This year they've completely turned that around uh, to a new essay topic which says. Uh, if you could choose any two uh, fictional characters from a book, movie, or television series to be your friends, who would you choose and why? Uh, again, one fifty words. So the word limit remains the same, but uh, they want you to they want to see if uh, you are inspired by what you read or see or hear around you. Again, that component of reading books can be seen in this essay, which shows the emphasis Ashoka plays on critical reading, writing, being able to analyze uh, situations, being able to apply that to your own context. So they are trying to look at your reflective thinking uh, through this essay as well. Uh, last year, I saw a lot of students talk about uh, COVID, about family situations, personal contexts, and I think. Uh, a lot of themes started getting repeated as well perhaps the admissions mm-hmm. committee got bored reading of uh, similar themes uh, from students and they wanted something fresh but uh, yeah uh, it's a good day- change to have any suggestions any ideas he's on of this um the last so in the past few years uh, i've seen the admission committee or the application form uh, making a lot of emphasis on books whether it be a question about writing a fictional character which obviously uh, is a question regarding what firstly whether you read books or not secondly what kind of books do you read and then other emphasis on mentioning five books that you read recommending a book to a person so i think overall i in, in my person in my opinion i've realized that she put a lot of emphasis on books and the kind of books one read and being an ashoka alum i know that if you don't read a lot of books ashoka not a space where you can survive easily i think if you are a reader i think you want should be excited to read and have curiosity to read but uh i can see the emphasis on reading and i think it's a valid emphasis that they've shown in their application just like how uh, ashoka's academic in general focuses on critical reading and writing so yeah that's what i wanted to add Yeah, that's so relevant. That is, that is so important. And if you haven't read anything so far or are not confident of what you've read, start making a list today. A list of diverse set of books uh, that that also resonate with the multidisciplinary learning that Ashoka offers, and try to reflect that in your own reading to ensure that you have a strong application to submit. The last essay question. Uh, there is no third essay this year, but just for your uh, information, we had an essay which said, "The language of a person influences their understanding of the world." Pick your favorite word from any language and tell us why this word is special to you and how it has impacted you. We saw a lot of interesting essays on that, and often we saw students connect their activities and engagements with that essay in some form or the other. But uh, one less essay for you to write. So that's good news, I see. And uh, is there any other changes? Uh, anything that we are missing in the application form? Uh, one thing I noticed was the major 
things listed. If you know, or if you're someone who's applying to Ashoka, you can list out three preferences of major in your application form. That definitely is not saying that you have to major in these three things that you're listing, obviously. It's just your preferred major that you're listing down. Um, what I realized this year, the changes that I saw was that they've, uh, they've listed some of new major that uh, they've introduced, I guess, this year. If I may list out a few of them, uh, philosophy and computer science, entrepreneur leadership, economics and history, mathematics and computer science, psychology and philosophy. So these are interdisciplinary courses and major that uh, were never there before. So they've introduced this major. And I think uh, that was an interesting change that I noticed and I think it was worth mentioning here. If, if I add a bit on this, I think um, Ashoka is starting a new campus and it's trying to focus on science and everything. Um, so I can see a lot of science or history or mathematics um, combining few subjects to make it into a new interdisciplinary. So I'm looking forward to those new changes and I guess a lot of uh, students were excited to learn science should be excited to explore these subjects when they reach Ashoka. And they have a, quite a few scholarships that are there opening up. I remember seeing a merit scholarship for computer science students that they have now. Uh, so yeah. they're really uh, trying to focus on the research aspect of the university, not just a little arts, but a science and research backed university as well. And that's what you will hear more of uh, Ashoka University is for. So that's a good change. Uh, those are all the changes that we see in the application from this year. Uh, we wish you the best. Uh, I hope you're able to submit the most compelling application that you can. And if there are any questions that you have, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'll uh, drop my email address in the description box below. And uh, all the best. And I hope you get through the dream college of your choice. Uh, I wanted to advise all the students who want to hear early decision to start submitting your application. Uh, the first round of uh, the admission process has already started. There are multiple rounds and depending on your own schedule and timeline, you should submit. But if you are someone who wants their decision early on before their board examination, they should start uh, writing their essays and uh, submit first round. So good luck to everyone who's applying this year.